Welcome everyone back to North to Prem. In today's episode, we have one fixture in the Premier League and then we have an away trip to Sunderland in an FA Cup fifth round replay. Since the last time you left us, obviously we had our first two games in charge of the club and it did not go very well. We had back-to-back -back losses. We then followed that up with a nil-nil uh, draw against Leicester, which was not too bad. We then narrowly lost to Arsenal. We did go behind... Um, Early in the game, we went 2-0 down. We then brought it back to 2-1 before then they made it 3-1. But we did come back at 3-2. I thought we might have just been able to sneak a draw there, but we, we just didn't manage to uh, to just get us anything left, uh, left over the line. We then came to January and we made, as you can see, quite a few changes. And our fortunes have very much turned around. We followed up a January change of players with a 3-0 uh, win over Nottingham Forest. And we then followed that up with a 3-1 win over Wolves. We then handsomely beat... Dover in the FA Cup 7-2 before then getting a very, very good draw against top in the league, Man City. We then drew our game against Sunderland, which has caused this replay. It actually took a very late equaliser from one of our new players to get that. We then drew one all with Southampton in the league. So we've got a very, very interesting fixture. If you remember, Crystal Palace was the other team when we were at Lincoln that actually offered us a job interview. They decided not to hire us and Fulham did. So this is a bit of a grudge match for me personally. We then go, uh, sorry, it was, I, th I thought I said, I think I, in the intro, I said it was a fifth round replay. It's actually a fourth round replay we've got against uh, Sunderland away from home. I thought just an FA Cup fixture would be interesting. We'll also finish off the January transfer window and we will cover what we've done in the January transfer window. We've still got a little bit of business left to do, but we have got a lot of players that have come in and we've got a lot of players that have come out. So if we go all the way down on the outgoings, we can see all of the players that have gone out. Uh, we won't cover every one of them because a lot of them aren't players that you'll even be familiar with but a lot of these lads are just kind of young players um that have went out on uh you know cheap deals luka jovic was um kind of just passed it at this point only a championship player he's gone to saudi for two twenty three and a half million he's having a lovely time over there not good enough for our level but he's probably doing quite well there uh david watson was just another one of those sort of rotational center mids again probably not really good enough for the premier league he's went to the bundesliga for to cologne for 1.5 million uh colin kelly just a backup uh young winger well not even a backup just a young winger never really going to be good enough he's went to lincoln our former club wasting 650k and i'm glad to see that they've not really continued the the transfer policy that we had at all uh bright osman another one of those just young uh players not really going to play he's went to salento for 1 million with 2.2 million in clauses uh we then sold solly march our backup um sort of fullback he's went uh he's joined i think yeah he's joined luka jovic at al riyadh um so he's went to 1 million pounds there obviously again this just shows the bad business that this club's been doing they paid 6.5 million for him and then we've just sold him to, to saudi for 1 million um yeah, it's a D up one of our starting centre backs when we first joined the club. He's gone to uh, Saudi as well. The Saudis have really kind of helped us out here <laughs> by paying quite good fees for some of these pretty average players. Uh, he's went to Al Faya, Al Faya, not sure, for 15 and three quarter million pounds there. Uh, we then sold Alex Awobi to Hoffenheim for 11 million pounds. Again, just a rotation player, needed to move him on. Otavio was never happy. He's went to Saudi. Um, again, he's going to be joining Diop in the back line there too for 7 million pounds. Andreas Pereira and Richelli uh, will be joining each other at uh, Atletic Minera, I think it is. Uh, 6.5 million for Pereira, which is a good deal because he's like, really rubbish now. He's like, a, yeah, he's like barely a championship player. Uh, and Richelli, again, just one of those centre-backs that's not going to play Brazilian. Uh, so he's went back to his native home of Brazil for 2.3 million. We then sold Paulinho, and this is probably a little bit of a surprise one because he's actually probably was rated as our best player. But honestly, he's just so slow. And he just even in the match engine, you can just see he's just not good enough. Um, he's decent Premier League, but yeah, he just wasn't doing it for us. So he's went to Fenerbahce for 7.5 million, rising to 9.5. We then let a couple of the other young lads go out on freeze and, and some loans etc so um that all means that including obviously the business that was done earlier in the summer window that 87 million pounds is left and we have spent quite a bit of it as you know we had about a 70 something 75 million pound budget um but with all of those players leaving that's got boosted to about probably close to 100 million yeah probably probably not close over 100 million because that was 23 and a half for luka jovic that was a big one um yeah no we we, we made lots of money so we, we're not too worried about that uh, it, you know what i think would be useful in football manager if you could break it down between the summer window and the transfer win uh, the january transfer window i think that would be good but anyway so this is the business that we've done so 
couple of former Lincoln boys have come in. Jiri Hadashok, our young uh, Czech centre-back that we signed at Lincoln for £3.5 million. Well, we've went and spent a little bit more to bring him up to the Premier League. So we've paid £10.5 million. So just in one window, um, good bit of business for Lincoln. We've gave them plenty of money, so hopefully they'll use it wisely. Kevin Contreras, our young Colombian striker who we had at Lincoln, we've brought him along and he started quite well. Got two goals in four games, £10.5 million for him. Um, and then Spike Britt, the goalkeeper we had on loan at Fulham, uh, sorry, on loan at Lincoln. We've brought him in to Fulham as a permanent deal, just £1.4 million pound there so quite a cheap deal there all around other deals that we've brought in um we brought in i'm leaving this one to last because there's a reason uh we've brought in victor hugo bush he's going to be our new colombian left back he brought uh, he comes in from atletico nacional for 2.5 million pounds again another quite a cheap deal there he is not listed as a wonder kid but he's currently got three stars uh, he's currently a leading championship player with five stars of potential so i think he's got Good potential to be good. Uh, we've then brought in Renatus Evans. He joins us as a Colombian Wonderkid centre, uh, sorry, Belgian Wonderkid centre back, and he looks unbelievable. Already showing as a good Premier League player with five star potential. Sixteen point seven five million for him, and he's already came in and looked a miles better than any other centre back that we've had at the club. We then broke the bank for Simone Aneto, a Wonderkid winger striker. I'm still not sure where he's best. Um, he comes in from uh, was it Lazio? Oh, yeah, no, sorry, Napoli, Napoli. So they paid 25 million for him, barely played him, and made a very nice profit. We really spent a lot of money on this lad, but it's just another one of those wonder kids. I and mean, we we have we've bought wonder kids, <laughs> wonder kids. We really rejuvenated the squad. Uh, not a great debut for him, but he's not played a lot, so he needs to get up to fitness. Currently shown as a decent Premier League player with five star potential, so again, quite good. Nearly all of these deals are about five year deals, four or five year deals on all of them. So as you'll see as I'm clicking through it, it's, it's all about five, four or five year deals. Uh, and then second last one, we've got Royal Walters. He Walters, he joins us from Arsenal for 15 million pounds. He can play as our second choice right back, left back. Uh, he can also fill in at centre back if needed as well. He's six foot tall, so it's not like he couldn't play there. And then the last one we've got in, I think, is going to be a future, future massive star in this save. Carlo Igor Dianazevich. Dianazevich? Dianazevich? Not sure. Dian Zevich. Dian Zevich came in from Dinamo Zagreb for £8.5 million. And he got the one goal in four, but this lad looks amazing. He's already shown his four-star ability, five-star potential. He looks incredible. 17 acceleration, 18 agility, 16 natural fitness, 17 pace, 16 dribbling, 16 first, first touch, 16 technique, 16 off the ball, 16 composure, 15 decisions. He's incredible. And he is another wonder kid. He's also got the place of shots trait. Um, so all of that means we have really brought in quite a lot of players. As you can see, £120 million spent. And to be honest, looking at the summer, that's mostly us. We've really broke the bank. I don't know where, I guess, yeah, I guess the Arnetto deal really, you know, but I think we've spent well. I think we've maybe spent a little bit on players like Contreras and Hadashok, mostly because I just know of their quality. I know they're good. But I think we've got good deals elsewhere, like 8.5 million for this lad's unbelievable. He's a he's a massive player. Now, one thing I will say is that most of these players do have both release clauses and relegation release clauses. If we go down, yeah, these players are going to go on the cheap. That's inevitable. Um, financially, the club are, yeah, really heavily in debt. But the, like I say, there's, there's plenty of uh, players leaving um, that are on sort of loans to buy. So that's going to cover that. We'll also get money at the end um but one thing we are still is bottom of the league now we have narrowed the gap slightly so i think we were at one point uh was it 10 points away or something like that i think we were on like seven points when we took over so we've got up to 16 so we are just seven points away from wolves um so we've narrowed that gap from about 10 to 7 but yeah we, we definitely need to uh to pick that back up we definitely need to do that um but we'll hopefully see pretty much most of these lads because they've all kind of just came straight into the team um so we have spent a lot we are a little bit financially ugh, but I think we'll be okay. We're still trying to bring in one or two more. Uh, we've got two lads coming in that are hopefully going to be joining us soon, hopefully this episode. We've got Dennis. He is a um, Brazilian defensive midfielder. He looks like a decent player for the future. Again, looks like he's been playing quite well over in Brazil. So we've got him on a £9.5 million deal. And one thing you'll notice, the wage bill's gone down massively. So I think the club was spending about two point something million for players at the minute. We've actually... With even though we've brought in a lot of players, because of the players, the, the likes of the players that we've left, let go, uh, the likes of like Palinia and Pereira and, and Jovic and all those kind of high earners, the, the wage bill's actually gone down. We've actually got nearly a hundred million spare in wage uh, <laughs> wage budget. Um, 
we've still got 46 million we can spend in the transfer budget as well which is why we're trying to bring in these lads uh, and then the other one we are trying to bring in is Sergio he is a Spanish 20 year old winger he looks very quick looks like he works hard got a bit of a something about him technically as well um, again he's shown as a good Premier League player that can improve significantly not a wonder kid but still someone who's got high potential he's been playing over in Vallecano currently in the second division which I think is what is uh, I thought it was a release clause actually but I think they're just letting him go on the cheap for whatever reason maybe they're in financial trouble I don't know um, but yeah so those are the players we're trying to bring in but like I say we've done some some mega business um, and that means the team oh and one thing I have actually forgot to mention we've also got Jeremy Frimpong coming in he's joining us in the summer which is going to be very interesting if we go down because Jeremy Frimpong is scouted as a world-class right back. So if we manage to get this lad in and we're playing in the championship, we are winning the league next year, no doubt about it. Um, so he's going to come in next season. He's going to be our new star right back. He, yeah, he's incredible. He's incredible. He's not moved. He's just been playing in Bayer Leverkusen, which is uh, quite surprising because usually he tends to move, get a move to like Man City or Arsenal or one of the big clubs. But uh, he's just been in Germany the whole time. And uh, yeah, we're paying him a lot of money. I think it's about 140k, which I think would make him the highest earner at the yeah the highest earner at the club by by some way. Uh, we need to move Marvin Park on. He's not worth 110k. I need to I need to adjust. I need to look at some of these wages. I think because uh, I mean we've got Spike Brits on 18 grand a week, and we've got our second choice keeper now on 76,000. So I think in the summer we'll probably look at these wages and go, who can we? get rid of like do we need Marvin Park do we meet well, I mean we're trying to move Max Kilman on anyway but we probably don't need Bassi on such a high wage we don't need Cabral on such a high wage if they're in the start in the lineup like Harvey Barnes I don't mind paying 100 grand, 100 grand um but yeah, I mean, we're paying like 80 grand a week for Royal Walters. He was very weird with his negotiations. Even though he's only a squad player, he wanted a lot. But he's English. We, do, we don't actually have a lot of English players in the club. Um, so we probably do need to keep as many of them as possible. I mean, I'm trying to move Kilman on, but you get the point. Um, but I don't know, does Frimpong actually count as... Yeah, he counts as an English homegrown player. So that's actually useful for us, um, I think. Will that be useful? I think, uh, yeah, 15 to 21, that's for... Is that ju I think, yeah, that's just for the Premier League, so it's not going to count towards Europe, I don't think. But it will help us with our uh, U uh, Premier League registration. At the minute, we actually have quite a small squad, so it doesn't matter. Um, we've got six players. So I guess the idea of moving, I was thinking of moving like Patterson and Bassi on, but I guess we don't really want to. I guess Jenkins can come in. He'd be one of the ones that we could uh, we could bring in, and that makes that number a bit better. But yeah, it's more for... Um, I guess it's more for Europe. We need to worry about that. I think for the Premier League, we'll be okay. So we don't need to worry about it too much just yet. But yeah, Frimpong's coming in. What a deal that is. So we have spent a lot of time reviewing the squad. Uh, I've just realized we're like 12 minutes in. So let's go and play an actual game. Uh, let's go play a football match. So we have got Crystal Palace at home in the league. And this is the team very much that we're going with these days. So Spike Britt's in goal, uh, a back four of Walters. Uh, the only reason Walters is in is because Emerson Royal's injured. Uh, we haven't really been playing Walters. He made his debut in the last game when Royal's uh, Royal got injured, so uh, we are starting with Walters. Then we've got Evans, Hadashock, and Victor Book. Is it Victor? It is Victor, isn't it? Is it Book or Buck? Or Butch? I'm going to call him... I don't know which one I prefer. I'm going to call him Buck. We'll call him Bucky. And then we've got a midfield two of Jashari and Hamada, Gruda on the right, Barnes on the left, and then Oneto and Dianazevich up top. I am very much of the idea of playing Contreras over Donetto, but... Uh, uh, Onetto, sorry, but um, yeah, he just looks so good. I think he might be better as a winger, you know? I don't know. He's really an advanced forward. I think that's the issue, is that he's an advanced forward, but yeah, Diana Zevich, he's too good. He has to be our advanced forward. He's a star player, so uh, Contreras isn't a star player. He's just a squad player, so he'd be happy sitting on the bench. I think Onetto is also, a, yeah, he's an important player, so that's kind of part of the part of the reason. To be fair, Arthur Cabral, uh, Cabral, Sabral, Cabral, he's actually been okay since, we, since we've come in. Um, he's been rubbish all season, but since we've come in, he's actually been not too bad um, playing with some better players, so I'm not forcing him out anymore. Uh, it's very much a case of if someone... I mean, we might look to move him on if we bring Sergio in, maybe, because um, we probably don't need a fourth striker if we've got someone who can also play on the right. It's just because Contreras and um, Aneto are kind of playing as backup wingers at the minute as well so yeah we've got a, uh, a match against our the team that didn't want us so let's go and let's go and beat them we're in good form we've, we've really turned it around um the issue now is we have to go on pretty much a europa league run to get out of the bottom <laughs> to get out the bottom three uh but again we just need to it, it, we've closed the gap on burnley though that's the main thing we needed to just look up to the next player uh, to the next team sorry instead of just thinking just to, just to get out we need to keep we need to keep in mind that we need to actually get 
out of 20th, first of all. We have been above Burnley very temporarily, um, but when, when they played their games, get in. When they played their game, we, we were uh, well, straight back down to 20th. So, Renas, is it Renatus? I'm still learning all the players. I mean, you'll be learning all the players as well, but uh, Evans has got a goal. It was Dianazevic with the corner and he's just headed it in. And he look, honestly, he looks a real, real player. Um, he looks very good. Crystal Palace are sitting in 15th. So if, I mean, if these are the kind of games we, we kind of want to be winning. Um, Harvey Barnes now taking a corner on the left-hand side and I thought Evans had got a second. I thought we were onto something here. Let's just keep getting corners. Let's just play for corners. Dianazevic with a corner, whips it in, cleared this time. Aneto picks it up into Dianazevic, who plays it back to Evans, who can play it right back, so he's not in an unf unfamiliar position there, but Dianazevic gives the ball away very poorly, actually, and uh, Crystal Palace are allowed to uh, to get on the ball themselves, which was uh, quite poor from him, to be honest. It was quite a poor bit of play from him for someone who's been some been really good, but good work there from Hadashok. Plays it up to Aneto, who we, uh, yeah, still trying to find his best position. For now, I'm playing him as a pressing forward. Really doesn't suit his, his attributes, um, but I just want to get him in the side, and uh, yeah, I don't know where else to play him because I don't think he's going to be a right winger too much um, but Amada gets tackled in the box and I thought we might have been getting a penalty there but it plays it to Dianazevic who gets on the end of it and I think he might have just been offside there it's a lovely finish it's a really lovely finish but I think he may have just been offside and he was he must have just been an inch or two offside there very disappointing but uh, it does remain 1-0 but we've looked the better side and to be honest since I've come in Maybe besides the Villa game, we've looked... The, I mean, even then, we were not too bad there. We've looked the better side in every game, so it's just about, is there enough time to turn this round? I mean, there's another 13 games. I think there's just enough time. I think we've, the fact that we've closed the gap so well, so, so early is a good sign. And we haven't taken, you know six seven games to get going it, it's it was been like three or four so it's given us a little bit of time but i do think we are probably the bat line is probably our weakest position at the minute evans looks great had a shock looks good and i think he can definitely improve because he's still young um i'm not sure about book at left back he's not really a left back once i've looked at him closely um it's his natural position but he's really more like a winger um he's really not very big he doesn't really tackle or mark very well but uh and i've seen it in the in the match engine a couple of times he's not like very very good in that position so um yeah i'm not sure about him but uh he's done okay so far so we'll take gruder off we'll put a netto on the right and this is one move we have got that we can that we can do um we will also bring morgan jenkins on and swap these two rounds uh, i've been giving morgan jenkins lots of game time and he's um I mean, he hasn't thrived under it, but he's done okay. Uh, we'll take Hadashok off for Bassi as well, just because he is on a yellow. Uh, so we'll make a triple change there. And hopefully with 20 minutes to go, that will uh, give us a little bit extra to try and get a second or even just hold on to this. Um, but Harvey Barnes, I'd say, has got to be, because he was here when we were playing with the bad team, and he's been good. So I'm I'm a bit of a fan of Harvey Barnes. I'm thinking he's been a, a little bit of a hero, I guess, since we've come in. And Neto picks up the ball really well there, plays it through, and Morgan Jenkins gets his first goal for the club. And uh, he's definitely someone that I feel like I've kind of... I've taken under my wing. He barely played before we came in. Very much looking like a, a bit part player, but um, yeah, no, he's been incredible. He's been in. Uh, no, no, hang on, I'm being a bit. I'm being a bit too generous. He's not been incredible. He's been okay. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll take off uh, Barnes. We'll put Dianazevic. The good thing about Dianazevic and Aneto is even though I think they are strikers, they can also play out wide and he's pretty good at it as well because they're both rapid. So one thing we can keep doing is, is giving strikers game time. And I do think the 4 2 4 is, is where we want to be playing. Uh, ball over the top and Brits, really bad there, really bad. Comes for it, doesn't get it, and it's left an open goal with five minutes to go. Crystal Palace do have one back, and this if we throw this away, this would be very poor, because like I say, we've been the better side, and that is one thing I've noticed from Brits. He's a very good shot stopper. He's very good at distributing, but when the ball's in the air, he just never looks comfortable with it, but thankfully, it's not going to matter. Zlatko Dalic holding his hands on his hips in disgust at what he's just seen, and I'm giving big two fingers up to Steve Parrish in the press box. I mean, I guess we're at home, so he might not be there, but the imaginary Steve Parrish, big two fingers up to him for not signing me because uh, Tony Khan and the rest of the Khans all had the foresight to see that I was the better manager anyway and we've proved it there with a win we come off the bottom of the league and now just four I guess yeah four points away from Wolves five points uh, no, no hang on I'm miscalculating here six points away from Norwich we're looking much more closely to safety just two points away from Brentford that's our next that's our next goal to go up Brentford but we can uh 
focus a little less on the league now because our next fixture is against Sunderland in the FA Cup, so we'll be back for that one. So for our second game of the episode, we have our fifth round replay, sorry, I keep saying fifth round, fourth round replay away to Sunderland in the FA Cup. And this is the team we're going with. We've got Spike Britt in goal again, a back four of Evans at right back because Walters is cup tied and Emerson Royale is injured. A, bit, uh, a back two of Bassey and Hadashock with then Book filling out the rest of the back four. Dennis comes in for his debut. His transfer did go through, so he's joined us as one of our new midfielders. £9.5 million from the Brazilian side. Shown as a leading championship player, got a bit of potential to grow as well at just 20 years old, and I think he'll do it. We've got Jashari playing against him. Sergio, another one of the youngsters who's come in. He joins us from Vallecano. His deal did cross the line there, £30 million. So he's came in again. Uh, some release clause on him, but we'll obviously take a look at those more when people actually come into him. So he comes in for his debut. So both coming in for their debut. He's going to be partnering up with Harvey Barnes on the left side side, and then Aneto and Diana Zevich up top, and the rest of the players there on the bench. Um, we didn't play very well when we played these last time, but hopefully the two new boys can come in and make a bit of a difference. Um, I think Dennis looks a bit more of an actual ball winning midfielder. I think the only natural ball winning midfielder probably in the side was Morgan Jenkins, and he's probably he's good, but he's probably not good enough to be starting every game. I know he scored in the last one. Um, Scott the winner in the end actually ended up being the winner but I'm not sure he's good enough to be starting week in week out um, he's the kind of player that I would like to uh, get in the side regularly because he is young and I do think he's got potential but um, yeah we'll, we'll bring Dennis in hopefully he can do well and hopefully we can see some from, from Sergio as well obviously we won't judge them too harshly on this game because he is playing with basically a centre back at right back in Evans um, definitely not his natural position he can play there but I think he's yeah he's probably not really a right back um, but hopefully we can see something from the new lads and there's Sergio whipping the ball and wasn't a terrible ball comes out to Victor Book who plays it off to Sergio and what a way to introduce himself 15 minutes in gets a debut goal away at the Stadium of Life and it was a lovely uh, Stadium of Light sorry it was a lovely finish just taking it on the on the first time really and just smashes it bottom corner lovely finish and if we can see that more from him I think we've got our new right winger um, he does I think this is uh, yeah this has very much revolutionised our attack bringing him in because I think we were just missing that really good piece of the puzzle it doesn't mean we've probably got one too many right mids I think I prefer um, Gruder is it I think I prefer Gruder over Marvin Park really haven't seen anything from him and he's on 110 grand a week so if we can get him moved on that would be ideal Harvey Barnes getting a chance there but his effort just a bit wayward goes over the bar and again we're looking good we're looking like a good side these days and I tell you what Book gets a lot uh, book, book or Booch or Book or whatever the hell he's called Victor Victor Book gets a lot of um, assists and I'll tell you that it's very pleasing to see he's not the best left back he's not the best defensive left back but yeah he offers quite a lot going forward so I'm willing to uh, I'm willing to sacrifice it a little if that makes sense to uh, to get you know what's essentially a very good output from him on the other side um, and with a you know basically a centre back at right back I really don't mind him uh, him playing there um, a good ball in from Evans there well it's kind of just swung in really Jashari picks it up plays it off to Harvey Barnes looks for an option finds Victor Boo who is like I say great at putting a ball in he puts a good one in there for Barnes who turns plays it in and Aneto gets his first goal for Fulham it's 2-0 and we are looking much much, much better. And I think, yeah, we've, I think the defense was okay. I think, I mean, we, yeah, I mean, we've basically changed the 11, haven't we? How many of these players were even at the club? Um, Harvey Barnes, I guess, Jashari. Yeah, we've, we've basically just ripped the team apart and started afresh. I think that's what we needed to do. Jashari, Harvey Barnes, I guess Calvin Bassey as well. So yeah, three out of the 11 weren't January signings. So that just shows you how much business we've done. Comfortably winning. I think it's time we uh, brought a couple of players on. We'll bring Morgan Jenkins on for a decent debut from Dennis, but we'll give obviously Morgan Jenkins a chance to come on and make, uh, get some game time. Max Kilman still needs to get some fitness, so we'll bring him on for Hadashock. And uh, we'll also take Harvey Barnes off as well for Gruder and just give him a bit of a rest. Hopefully these substitutions don't have a negative impact on us. I would expect us to be a little bit worse off because we have taken off three very good players there but um hopefully it doesn't affect us too much and we've really limited Sunderland to very few chances and Neto getting a debut goals look that has really pleased me because uh I was a little bit worried about his output looking at some of his uh attributes I'm not sure if he's necessarily an out-and-out -out striker but again I'm not really sure <laughs> I just don't know where I play him he doesn't work he's nowhere near hard enough of a worker to play at striker so I, I really don't know where to play him but Either way, we'll uh, bring Marvin Park on. He's not really a fullback, but 
uh, yeah, we need to we need to rest some players now to make sure they don't pick up any injuries. And uh, with that in mind, we'll also bring a Hamada on. And I think that is all the substitutions we can make. We'll try and get another one on. We'll try and sneak one on. No, we can't. Right. Aneto and Dianazevic will have to play the full 90. That's fine. Uh, Amada comes on and uh, Marvin Park at right back. Again, he's not a right back, but hopefully he can uh, just about see it off. And you know what? Dianazevic is. it seems like he's got a good corner on him because he's whipped in a great ball there. And Calvin Bassi has finished it off to make it three. And this looks like... Like a very comfortable progression into what will actually be the fifth round of the FA Cup. Looks like we'll be progressing to the fifth round of the FA Cup just nicely, which is good. Aneto working really well there to pick up the ball. Gruda picks up Sergio on the right-hand side. Can he get a second? And he can't. It's actually a really good save. Um, he probably should be finishing that. It's, it's, the one he scored was actually a much harder chance than that one. But uh, he looks like he's had a good debut, which is really promising to see. Good ball whipped in from him. Falls to Ahamada, who smashes it top left-hand corner. And Bassi with a goal and assist is... Uh, uh, looking like he's uh, a little bit revolutionized under us. 4-0 now, and it's all looking very comfortable. And honestly, I think the main thing is these results have actually led to the, uh, the, the, the total atmosphere at the club has just completely turned on its head and all the dynamics are looking very good now and the team's just very very happy with where we are so I think we've we've made the right decision to come to Fulham because there is a, a lot more finances here than there was at uh, Palace obviously we didn't have a choice of going to Palace they they rejected us but I think I think even though I think Palace might be more of a fun club to go to, I think in the end, oh, that's a great turn from Aneto. Sergio picks the ball up, plays it through with Dianazevic, and he's deserved his goal. He's done some great work today. It's 5-0. We're, oh, we're just amazing now. We Genuinely, if we start the season with this kind of side, yeah, what I really want to do in the summer, um, I don't think we need to bring in a lot of players. We'll bring in some. Obviously, we've got Frimpong coming in anyway. But I don't think we need to bring in a lot, a lot of players. I think probably a, a really good goalkeeper would be would be on my list. Maybe a very good left back as well and make Book more of a second choice. I don't know. Um, maybe a really good centre back, uh, really good midfield. I think the front four I'm happy with. I think Sergio, Aneto, Dianazevic and Barnes I don't really need to mess with. It's really the back line, the goalkeeper. I'm thinking maybe we need a proper good centre-back or a proper good left-back because um, we'll have Evans and Frimpong on the right-hand side, but then the left-hand side is a little bit weaker. So maybe we... Uh, I, I guess we've got faith in Hadashock and stuff. Um, Sunderland obviously got a late goal mark there, but uh, yeah, we've looked really good. Sergio, man of the match on his debut. What more could you ask for? Great start from him. Um, yeah, uh, financially, we are ruined. <laughs> 78 million. Hey, they gave me a budget. I'm under budget. I haven't even spent the budget. We're 500k in the wage, but yeah, we're okay. I'm not worried about it. And the, the club's not worried about it, so I'm not worried about it. And that's how I'm going to keep progressing with this. Um, but yeah, I think if you look at it, we probably do with a really good left, uh, really good centre back coming in. Probably a really good goalkeeper, I guess, would be the other one. I mean, I like Spike Britz, but he's... Um, it's a little bit weird in the air, but he's happy being a backup player. He's only 21. He's homegrown as well, so in nation at least. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to keep him. I'm happy to keep him around, but uh, we are trying to move Marvin Park on. He's got an offer for £10 million. It's not really that. I think he's worth probably a bit more than that, but he's on 110 k so if we can get him gone, then uh, you're not going to see me complain. Um, but again, financially, we're good. Wage budget's fine. So I'm not too worried about it. I think we're doing really well. So, uh we will progress this, and I don't know where we'll come back. We don't. Uh, it's probably too much to come back for just the end of the season. I think we'll do. Ooh, should we come back for some some tough games? Maybe. Should we come back for? Should we just do the next? You know what? Yeah, let's do that. We'll do. We'll play off camera from Newcastle down to Tottenham, and then we'll come back for a big big Premier League double header because Man United aren't very good this year so it could actually be a one we could win so we'll come back for a big proper Premier League double header of Chelsea and Man United that sounds good and then yeah episode after we'll do the last two games of the season so we'll play February off camera and then the Tottenham game yeah the Tottenham game off camera as well and then uh, we'll come back unless we have maybe an interesting FA Cup game around this time as well we might do that with Man United it just depends if we progress in that and where it falls on the calendar I assume it would be somewhere between these because it's quite a big gap there but um, that's the plan so we'll play this off camera and hopefully the next time you see us we might have even climbed out of the relegation zone wouldn't that be something so hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you all for more North to Prem very soon